Hello, my friends. How you doing? Stephen here. It's T with Steve live again. It's 5 p.m. Who would have thought that we would have made it this far without falling over or having some form of panic attack with tech and this, that, and the other not working? But we're here. I've got a great guest for you. You're going to absolutely love this. Um, I'm going to bring on very shortly Helen. Now, Helen had made an, a massive impact when I met Helen a couple of years ago. Uh, we uh, at, were at a networking event. We started talking about the mental health conversations that we were both involved in. And then literally I was doubled over in agony. And she said to me, you need polos. I was like, what? Polos? I suffer from ulcerative colitis, part of the RBD family. She said, peppermint gets to the root cause very, very quick. And since then, that lady has just given me massive amount of wisdom i was like helen we're gonna rock the world today online on tvc live and here she is how you doing madam hello i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by said intro but yeah oh. go on then <laughs> but guess what see Yay! This, is not, this is not planned these things are plugged to polo four four polos in one hit that amount of peppermint just hits the spot when if you're just yeah, yeah brilliant and I've got to just give you a massive shout out as well, because we met a couple of years ago and look at where you are now. You're petrified of video. You're doing a live interview on Facebook, YouTube and Periscope. You've gone yeah. live in my Facebook community, TWC. You've done, you've partaken in challenges. I know it's had an impact on you because you did a live uh, or you did an office or a live or pre-recorded from a, an event you went to. Yep. No, I did live. I did live. live. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you met me, um, I didn't actually even know how to find my Facebook password, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, things things have moved on a little bit since then. So. <laughs> so, Helen, for the people that haven't met you before, please tell people what you're up to and you've got some, we've got some secrets to share as well. <laughs> yeah, I've always got secrets to share. So, uh, I'm Helen. I am... Um, let's see. So I'm a Christian. I am a wife. I am a mother, and I own a, uh, a company called Weddell and Turner, which is a gluten-free and dairy-free uh, food producer. And uh, our thing is all about everybody deserves a treat. So wow. it is uh, all the naughty things. So we do cakes, we do gingerbread, we do biscuits, we do um, confectionery, and every single bit of it is gluten and dairy-free. And you'd never know. And it tastes amazing. The best gingerbread <laughs> I've ever had. And everywhere Helen goes, she takes these little gingerbread men with her everywhere. And I'm yeah, like, I'm a feeder. I have to feed everybody. So uh, Right. Uh, to keep coming. Bring them over here. I love your gingerbread. <laughs> Sadly, we're not yet back in production. So uh, coronavirus shut us um, because of my health. Um, and so we, we had to shut production because it's been based in my home. Yeah, and, uh, but we are. The good news is we are reopening. So Excited. August, yes, reopen. So August um, the when is it? August the well, hopefully the seventeenth. But okay. uh, we will um, we will start uh, getting the kitchen fully ready, and um, orders will be generally leaving us from September. So I should be having lots of conversations with lots of lovely people. Awesome! I like that. Lots of lovely conversations with lovely people. <laughs> No, but that's true, isn't it? Your customers and your clients, you should feel like that about them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because when it goes the other way, it's like it then puts it, it's like, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't want to go and serve those horrible people. <laughs> but when they're lovely people, it's like, yes. Best customer this year was a mum who was buying a cake for her 11-year-old son who had never had a birthday cake because he has so many allergies. Yeah. And we were able to give him his first birthday cake. That's lush. And it was absolutely, it, it made both my, sh my chef and myself, it made our day. So That yeah. is amazing, apparently, according to Greg. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what, what have you been doing then? Because I know there's stuff going on behind the scenes. There's never a dull moment with you. So come on. No, well, I've been giving stuff up. So uh, if you had met me or when when Stephen first met me, he would have known that I was something called a national leader of governance. And mm. um, uh, so yeah. basically I worked across, um, there are 300,000 school governors in the UK and there are 450 national leaders of governors who help support those. And uh, my speciality um, was supporting schools in crisis. 
So I would go in and I'd deal with all the horrible, difficult, stressful situations and sort out well-being for staff and sort out uh, issues for children and deal with staff that shouldn't be doing the jobs they're doing or all those kind of things. So um, and coronavirus means that um, because of what I want to do, my ultimate goal in life, um, it was a time to sit down and go, right, does this still fit on on my table of things to do? And mm. actually, I've got the opportunity to do a very exciting project. And um, and that means that I've had to lay some things down because okay. you can't do it. Your hands are full of everything. Yep. So um, so I had to lay down the school stuff. And Ooh. my final uh, my final set of schools that I've been looking after for the last two years, I will hand over um, on the 1st of October and I will step back from education. So, so you're um, no longer going to be the Gordon Ramsay of governors. No, that's it. Exactly. So and it's it's been an amazing journey. I have had 13 years of the pleasure of being able to sort of children get one chance in education. Yep. And I have had the pleasure of being able to ensure that the children I've worked with have had that chance to get the best out of education that they can. And now it's now it's time to do my next step. So, What's the next step? The next step. <laughs> so, so basically, um, I believe that everybody is designed for a unique purpose. The Ooh. Heart brain, of course, of course. <laughs> However, However, life is full of things that steal that purpose from people and people get yeah. distracted and just life happens. Mm. And so my plan is to give people the opportunity to step back and look at that. So whether they're suffering with mental health or whether they are dealing with bereavement or whatever, whatever those life things are. Yep. Um, to give them a place that they can come to and do that reset. And okay. so I have uh, come across a building through lots of bizarre um, coincidences. And uh, coincidences do not occur. They no, absolutely. I believe they're God incidences. So, um, and uh, this building, I actually dreamt it. I dreamt the rooms in it um, in like 2012, which makes me sound completely mental, but we'll go with it. And um, uh, this past November, I walked into uh, my kitchen where uh, one of my employees was and she was busy decorating gingerbread. And I was like, that's it. I've had it. I've had it. I need the building. That's not how it works. I should have the building. And she turned around and she asked me and she said, well, uh, do you know what it looks like? And I was like, well, I don't know what it looks like, but I have dreamt these rooms. And so I described the rooms and she stops what she's doing and she goes, I know the building. Now, when I describe one of the rooms to you, so it's a rectangular room with curved corners, high yep. ceiling, it has a wooden floor in it. It is like a, a Georgian sort of old style stately house building yep. and uh, it has a piano in it, right? And she goes, and I dreamt this in 2012, and she goes, I know where that is. And I'm like, so she says, Google this. And so yep. I looked it up and there on right move was the room that was in my dream. And at that point, I was like, right, I need to go see the building. I want to stand in that room. Right. And so at the beginning of December, I went and stood in that room. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I could see that estate becoming real. So a place where somebody that so I have a, a friend who has been dealing with um, tried to commit suicide numerous times, lots of mental health issues, and the yep. environment he is in, he cannot get a life reset. Okay. And what I'd like to be able to do is bring him to come and be with us, with a group of people that will basically be his community on hand so that he doesn't need to worry about the basics of every day, but he gets that opportunity to recover and work out who he is supposed to be and fulfill that destiny. Now, just for everybody who's watching, listening, and they're thinking, what are these two on about? I've actually seen a picture of this. This I'm going to call it building, okay? Really? Now, and I've and I've had a look around it. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm aware. I've done a little bit of stalking, and do you know what? The, do you know what the first thing that came to me was when, especially mm -hmm. when I heard about your story and your passion and what you wanted to do? Do you know what I thought? X-Men. 
I, I've seen X-Men. the building. Are you going to have to run me up to speed on X Men? <laughs> have you never seen the X Men? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah. Monkey. You're like Mrs. Okay. Xavier. Oh, with all big exactly. purpose, and you yes. bring these people together yeah, yeah. to 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 find yeah. their inner them, and then they yeah. come out and they are like our new superheroes. Yes, absolutely. And the and building I is that superhero. Yeah, everyone's got superhero in them lost that part because life's happened to them so it's, it's time and what's to try really to interesting is you you had these here's here's the here's the here's the, here's the insight i believe in insight not okay. coincidences that's just that's a word made up so that muggles can have something to hang their head <laughs> yep so See, for I me coincidences in my yep. everyday yeah. And, <laughs> and i truly believe there was a big man up there upstairs he brought coronavirus to us there you go i'll put it out there because the world needed well he's going to use it I think Pardon? we needed a reset. Well, yeah, the world need the world needs healing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so absolutely. I saw. So, so you had these dreams in like twenty twelve. Yeah. Okay, and then you, you know we met two years ago. Yeah. You have this conversation last year, and then you share your dream with someone you work with. They see the building. They show you the building. Yeah. Later on, I'm then shown the building. And I'm just like, it is. It's Mrs. Xavier. It's like, it's <laughs> and here, here's the link to you and me. Okay. Yeah. Two and a bit years ago. So before you've been shown the building, before yeah. we meet, okay. Yeah. I give a TED talk. Yeah. And it's all about your heart brand. But the heart, but the actual TED talk online is about how your heart brand will save the world. Ooh, okay. it's a bit spooky, isn't it? <laughs> I'm quite up for that. <laughs> Absolutely. I believe everyone has got something inside them that if they shared their true essence, the knock on the ripple effect will save our planet. Yes. Just absolutely. putting that out there. Just putting that out yeah, there. Absolutely. I mean, certainly for me, my daughter, um, she has made me rethink a lot of things. I talk about everybody deserves to dream. And, um, you know, actually, uh, when Amy came to me and she wanted to go to the climate um, school climate strikes. Yes. And I was like, you know, actually, here I am. I'm a, a national leader of governance thinking, oh, attendance, you know, all the things that you would normally. <laughs> that would know, be hilarious. Can I support this? And, uh, and actually, her and supporting her dream is what I'm talking about. People should learn to dream again. They don't. Children do it all the time. They dream of being a spaceman or being a vet or being whatever it is. And there's some point when you're an adult that it, it stops. And that's not yeah, right. It's wrong. And actually, we need to get back in touch with our inner child. I think that's probably why I am always my inner child. <laughs> right. Bear with me a sec. I see it. I see it. Hang on. Oh, sorry, Milo. Kill the dog. Right. In a child, be yeah. Have you ever heard of a book called Little Winds? No. Right. This little this book, it's worth very it's definitely. Worth, notebook, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's called The Huge Power of Thinking Like a Toddler by a chap called Paul Lindley. Right. Now, now for everyone out there, Paul Lindley, let me just give you a look. This will help put this into context. Paul Lindley, okay. Do you remember back in the day? When you're going, you're driving along, you're on a road trip, you go into a service station. Bear with me, I'm going into story mode. Yeah. And and then you <laughs> and before Costa Coffee was in every petrol station, there was that big purple machine, the coffee, yeah. the coffee machine. Paul Lindley used to own that company. Okay. He oh, started right. off putting coffee makers into into um into service stations. Everyone yeah. laughed at him, said it'll never take off, it'll never take off. And then he kept pursuing with it, saying, no, people are going on a trip. They're going to want a nice coffee. So he's having this beautiful coffee in these machines. Fast forward, he gets contacted by a, a large, um, reputable coffee manufacturer, and they buy him out for millions and millions of pounds. They're now called Costa. Yeah. Okay. He then said, right, love entrepreneurship. Need to need to get myself into the next task. And he, he sat down and he was having you know, these brainstorming sessions. This, I mean, this book, you can see it's been it's been so well read. <laughs> and um, but I need to do this. I need to do that. And the foreword on this book is from Richard Branson. Right. And uh, so you can see that the level of where he's going to with, you know, who's yeah. inspiring this, that and the other. 
Now, you being in the food industry will understand if I say to you, Ella's Kitchen. Yes. Kids food. Kids food. Yeah. Paul, Paul Lindley owns that company. He sat um, down on his on his kitchen table and was mapping this stuff out. And um, and the reason it's called Ella's Kitchen is because it's named after his daughter. Yeah. We should yeah. all think like kids. We <laughs> all forget to play. We do all forget. Because oh. kids always are like, let's dream. And my daughter was just yeah. like, right, I want to go to the climate strikes. And I was like, but I'm a governor. I don't know how to. So I, I had this conversation where. I don't you know, I, I want you to be able to go, but this is these are the rules, you know. So she went into school off her own back, spoke to her teachers, and they agreed that her and uh, her group of friends could go to the climate strikes. Love it. And so she got to go get her friends. She was doing exactly what, but within the legalities of what was required by mum, you yep. know, <laughs> it keeps mum happy. And actually, it means that I can support her dreams. You know, yep. from that, she is now talking on um, Norfolk, um, Norfolk, sorry, the dog. This is the dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, um, uh, she now talks on Norfolk Radio on their Love show. It fantastic because that's her dream that's what she yeah. wants to do she wants to sort out the world's climate problems she keeps telling me things like in 10 years there's 2000 uh, houses in the country that will drop into the sea you know this is this is dinner conversation <laughs> yeah so you have that round dinner conversation and i shared a story earlier about what happened around our table did you hear that about how my daughter my, my seven year old yeah dad you abandoned yeah. summer what yeah I know, I heard it. I was like, wow, harsh. <laughs> yeah, and that's Ruby. She's now seven. So can you imagine what I've got to live with? Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Do you know, for me, for everything I do, it's 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 dad first. I'm I'm a dad first. And that's why, okay. that's where the, the ethos and everything for Big Daddy is. And I'm like, okay. but if while we're being a parent, parents get to play. Parents get to do all these fun things with kids. So when we do business, we make sure it's fun. You know, yeah. we're running oh, around yeah. like head chickens with phones and doing this, that, and the other, and doing videos. Yeah. It's got to be fun because if it's not fun, it's not enjoyable. No, my um, the chef I work with, Daniel, um, he spends, um, you know, if he's having a bad day, staying in the office is not where we go. We go for a walk. I'm yeah. like, put your shoes on. We're leaving. And so we, we go out of the kitchen and we go walk in the countryside because by the end of the time you finish the walk, you can't argue with much. Yes. You know? nature has got you and yeah. the the beauty of this building is how much sky and nature there genuinely is out the front of what is a stunningly amazing building i've just got one problem don't have the money to buy it yet yeah so <laughs> we were because i was going to come to this because i know you've got things that are, you're putting in place and this and the other. i won't share that because it's, it it's private to you but it's about two million quid isn't it oh no 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 it's it's more than that no so, i think i don't lie I've made two million up. Eight is coming to mind. Yes, correct. It's, a, it's gonna the whole project um to Eight actually to buy the building itself is gonna be about six and a half million, which if you say really quickly, you know, it's fine. And then the actual project to get us back from that is gonna be about another couple of million on top of that. And right. yeah, we don't have we don't have that cash in amongst us. What we do have and what I you know it's that whole thing of how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat it a small bite at a time, don't you? You don't go, right, I'm going to stuff the whole elephant in. No, and you so... get a big tiger. <laughs> Is that the answer? I knew there was yeah. something I was missing. In small bits and it takes forever. Get a big tiger. <laughs> big tiger. But no, I. it was that moment of going, okay, right. So we don't have the money. But at the moment, if you gave me the money, I wouldn't have the ability to be able to run it. Okay. And so what we've been doing since December is actually going, well, what do we want to do there? How do we want to do it? And okay. because we want to be able to finance it um, so that actually we can show business, but business so that it supports all these people with where they are, you know, putting people in what they're destined to be into practice and actually pulling that through into then let's build the business and use that to then support the estate seems smart to me. Because you're not right. saying constantly, okay. asking, yeah, just need what to we're going to do is now we're going to do our dragon's den. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so tell me what it does. 
what yep. the outcome is for other people, what the business is, and how much yep. we need. What's the impact? Go for it. So, so bullet point, oh. smash it. <laughs> so what we want to be able to do is uh, run weddings um, okay. in the most beautiful settings that yep. would allow us to have weddings a Saturday over to Sunday uh, mornings that would allow us then to reset um, on a Monday and on a Tuesday it means that we can then do our outreach work or our retreat based work working with people that have had or families that have had bereavements or you think of the frontline workers coronavirus that kind of thing they'll yep. come and join us Tuesday to Friday again we do a reset and back to weddings uh, alongside the rest of that, we can actually do business retreats where we work on well-being at the same time as putting business information into people. Um, we can do, we've got that massive site. So festivals, events, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, camping on site um, because it's beautiful. And, yeah. uh, you know, so uh, alongside moving my business there, as well so Weddell and Turner will go there so we will continue to produce gingerbread and cakes and biscuits and that kind of thing uh, tea rooms in the downstairs so that we can set that up as so Dan's dream my chef's dream is to own his own patisserie yep. and so the idea is that we will use that as his prototype and then once we have got that prototype up and going it can then go out from there to Cambridge to Oxford to Edinburgh and we can take those people that come in and they will have their own unique skills or their own unique dreams and we have room and space to give them part of that and so yeah so that's kind of all of that bit um it takes about two hundred thousand uh, a year to run the site wow. um yeah it's a lot of money but it's an old building and we also want to keep the upkeep um going so that actually we are preserving it for future generations we also want to be able to uh, we're going to put it into a charitable trust so that actually, you know, it's not about me and millions. It's not about anything else. It is about the fact this is their build. We're going to put support around it. We have got, um, we've got a whole group of people that want to come in and give the opportunity for healing retreats and for that kind of, that sort of thing where people can pray, come and pray with people. We want to work with the community and offer them jobs. Cause obviously if you're running a lot of catering events, yep. You're going to need staff. So, yeah, all of that kind of thing is all in the big pot. And uh, and at some point, there'll be a grant coming that will sit alongside, you know, that pot Next that people up. that are coming in to work with us then can actually start their own thing and feed back to us. Okay. So. Next level up. So going like above that, where do you – what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Yeah. I – um. I want everybody to get there to fulfill their God given destiny because the minute that you put people where they need to be, then issues like mental health, well being, they all go away. Because if you think about a train, okay, if a train is on its tracks, it's doing what it is meant to do, okay? But if you tip the train on its side, it's still a train, it's just going nowhere and it's damaged and it's not working. So the right. idea is to pick people up, put them back on their tracks and get them going because then you're going to see some amazing things come out and you're going to see the world change by these people that we are sending out. They're going to be equipped. They are going to have the basics. So, you know, um, I have a friend who had um, a nervous breakdown and he could not recognize cash. You know, the things that most people take for granted as understanding what it was. He couldn't even recognize it, let alone manage it, let alone cook himself a meal. You know, there is a whole generation of people that haven't got that, the skill sets they need just to survive life. So yeah, that's what we want to do. The purpose is to basically give everybody that opportunity to properly live. I love it. And I'm just going to share this little comment on there now because this is where I'm going. This is what I think. I agree with Marion. <laughs> there has got to, and the thing is, we're surrounded by them. I know that yeah. there are investors in Tea with Steve who sit, lurk, stalk, and 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 watch content. Um, I know that there are um, people in other communities. Have you thought about um, sort of the B economy? You know, be, be, be setting up a B corporation. 
Yeah, so at the moment where we are was I needed to know, and uh, this is truly hot off the press. So having had meetings about what we want to do, all the different things we want to do, actually it is a grade two star listed building. Yep. So unless Historic England say yes to all my mad plans, we're not going to get anywhere. So literally I answered a phone call um, and I was thinking, oh, I can't answer a phone call. I'm about to go do a live. But Steve and I need my head clear, blah, 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 blah. And I looked at a number and I thought, well, I think I ought to answer that phone call, yep. um, which I did. And that was Historic England. And we've just had the maddest conversation to which they are excited about the fact that we want to keep the building, its outbuildings and its walled garden all together um, mm -hmm. under one entity. They would support us with what we want to do. So making it commercial rather than a residential because it would be contained under one entity. Yep. Um, there are a few pink flags, which is just opportunities to have more conversations in my world. I love that. <laughs> So, so, you know, and we have started that relationship that means that, you know, you talk about care all the time and that's it. This is the start of that relationship with somebody who can advise us in ways that we don't know because they see these type of houses over and over again. We talked about making this house sustainable. Uh, you know, that's something that's very close to my heart. You know, we want to be able to take, you know, a grade two star listed building and make it carbon net zero. You know, why not? Boom. So, uh, Right. This is what I'm going to do. OK, I, I know people who are good with money and figures. I know people who have are purpose driven. I know yeah. people who are massively in the mental health space and mental well-being space. And I can never promise anything at all. <laughs> But I can promise yeah. you I can put this video in front of them. And I can <laughs> and what I can promise you is that I can say from min from 19 minutes in, I want you to watch this. Because so, <laughs> I'm excited about it. I can see so many different things happening. Um, yes. and yeah, absolutely. And, and, and everybody I tell about it is attracted to it. You know, yeah. actually, this is a solution to a place where actually, you know, you know, my ultimate goal is eventually to return back to education, to actually teach people what they need as skill sets in life. However, mm -hmm. we have a whole generation that are missing that. Yes. So I've kind of got to fill that gap first. This will allow me to do this. And yeah, I have a, a whole bunch of crazy folk that uh, not only want to come on along for the ride, they're up for the challenges. 100% so, uh... count me in. <laughs> And I just want, to, I, I need to acknowledge you right now because I think your idea and your, not your idea, your passion and purpose is amazing. And I want to just show you that. Thank you. <laughs> People out there believe in you and what you're talking about yeah. and what you're doing. And that is why we wanted you on here today. Oh, thank you. And, you know, I think for me, you know my journey with social media and where mm -hmm. I've got to. And I'm still quite impressed I'm not swinging on my chair. I have to be frank, actually. <laughs> I have constantly in my head, I've got do not swing on the chair, do not swing on the chair. So, <laughs> but your your support in TVC has been amazing. And also Nat as well in uh, Roll With Nat. They have been things that have given me the confidence to be able to sit here having these conversations with you. I now having stepped down and as the end of term finished, it means that I can finally take a presence on social media, which I have yeah. not been able to do. So my little, uh, my little feet are about to get wet and I'm about to go. Yeah. And I've, been listening. I've been doing the social media sales. I've been doing all that kind of stuff, but I've never been able to be just me. And so that's something yeah. that I will be, We'll be doing from now on. I so. am super, super excited. I really, really am. It's it's going to be a fantastic journey. I'm really looking forward to to watching it, being part of it. If you'll have us, um, I just see so much, so much good, and that's and that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Oh, everybody deserves to dream. Everybody deserves to live their passion, and everybody deserves to be loved. I'm with you. That's it. Hundred percent. Yeah, and to do where? that, they need they need to have a treat which is part of Wedland Turner, they need to have a place and they need to have a voice. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to awesome. give them that. Where, if there's anybody watching this that can support your, your vision and mission for what you want to do, where would you like them to contact you? Um, probably the best thing to contact me um, is, um, oh, I didn't know that was going to be a question. My LinkedIn page. I am beginning Yay. to gain a LinkedIn page. It needs it needs more work, so please bear with me. We can sort but that out. Don't worry about that. 
As long so as you answer the messages, message. that's all you need to do. Yeah. Find awesome. me there. Helen Atzhead, LinkedIn. Wow. I feel like we've had some, like, a, like moment. It's like, <laughs> let's mark this. The 31st of July, right, at yeah. half past five on a Friday afternoon, this will be like, do you know what? That's the day. That's the day yeah. that we things changed. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. He's Helen, said yes. We were on the it, go. There is nothing been, stopping us now. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on here. And you thought it was going to be horrendous. You were panicking and yeah. everything. I was. I was having a bit of a nightmare and a meltdown. So, and, can, and can you believe you've been live on here now across Facebook in three different places, on Twitter, um, YouTube, and you've been here for half an hour. I know. And I have spoken the whole time. I know. When, when people met me, people, you have to understand that you put a camera in my face and I was mute. <laughs> I did um, I did an interview at a school because they wanted me to do an interview at a school. They put a camera in my face and there was no words that came out. None at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant right i'm gonna have to wind this up because i've got guests in green rooms and everything helen's been an absolute pleasure and i'm so pleased please keep me updated let us know what's going on and i'm oh, gonna absolutely. i'm gonna get the link to this video and then we're gonna share it and say right i really think you should be watching from 19 minutes in okay. if nothing else 19 minutes in <laughs> it will re- I'm going to write, I've got, I've literally got half a dozen personal emails that I'm going to write this weekend and say, I want you to look at this video from 19 minutes in. Thank you. And we'll see, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, There's absolutely. A, there are people, people out there you. who, you know, who, who, from just your, the whole thing of the, you know, the process, what you want to do, you know, sort of superhumaning people and the healing process. Uh, yeah. Healing is a big thing for me. Um, you know, helping people get back on track. Right, with what they, being able to pray for you and get rid of that IBD. We'll 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 go with that. Let's do that. I'm <laughs> up for that. I'm up for that. What well, with you and Marion, Mar- Marion's going to chill me out and zen me uh, and, and help yeah. me meditate again. And you know, you're going to check in with the big man. I- I'm all up yeah. for it. Excellent. And I got told off literally, literally within five minutes before coming on the live tonight. Um, Lindsay phoned me and she said, "Have oh, you got five minutes?" So I went, "Yeah, I'm upside down with my legs in the air." She's like, why? I said, because the you know, other half, I've got pain and like thinks I might have a clot. She goes, we need to get you off that Red Bull. Oh, I'm like, right, okay. It really hurts if you're drinking Red Bull. <laughs> Gives me wings. I know. I'd rather, I'd rather <laughs> you didn't gain wings, though. We want you to hear what's I need my angel wings, not the Red Bull wings. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, I'm going to leave you in peace. Thank you ever so much, sweet. I'll speak to you soon. Yes, see you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. What a brilliant, brilliant interview. The energy was nuts and on fire. Helen is so such fun to be around. But in an, on a serious note, what she's doing, what she's going to do for, for mental health and for the, the community and the world at large, she's going to have a massive impact with her passion project. And do you know what? This, the, the, let me just tell you now, when you tell your story, when you share with your heart brand, this is what happens. People say, Anything I can do to support from the healing side, let me know. They straight away, do you know what? They, things resonate. So you need to be sharing your story with people. You need to be getting it out there. Don't just say it once because on social, organic, one or 2% of your audience might see or hear that message if you're lucky. You need to keep c- cementing it in there, sharing it with people, connecting with people, having conversations with people, rinsing and repeat. Document your journey over creating something document, tell the story, pick up your phone. Today, this is what's happening. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to this meeting. This is what happened today. For me now, I'd be like, Helen, right, just had a call with X, Y, and Z, and this is what's happening. This is what we're doing. Can you believe it? I'll keep you posted. Get that out on social. My friends, document your journey rather than creating this beautiful piece of content. People want real life from people. Take care. I will see you at six o'clock from the other side of the water. We're going to America.